Okay, this is chapter 10, the shell and the glasses. So the first thing you're going to want to annotate is the very first section. Piggy eyed the advancing figure carefully. Nowadays he sometimes found that he saw more clearly if he removed his glasses and shifted the one lens to the other eye. But even though the good eye, after what had happened, sorry, but even better through the good eye, even after, after what had happened. Ralph remained unmistakably Ralph. So this is the motif of Piggy's glasses. And obviously Piggy's glasses represent logic, reason, kind of clear thinking, clear mindset, all those sort of things. So the fact that he's kind of starting to shift from one broken section to the other is quite significant. And also the fact that Ralph remains Ralph uh, is kind of a way of them saying that he's starting to question the leader of his little party, which at this point is just Ralph, Piggy, Sam and Eric who in this group are Sam and Eric rather than Sam and Eric, where they get run together when they join Jack's, Jack's tribe. So if you want to show off, um, Sam and Eric is significant because logically they're separate people, but when they become run together, Sam and Eric, uh, that means kind of giving up uh, personal identity so it's basically saying that when you become part of a fascist government or some form of kind of leadership, like obviously the example, the most obvious example would be Hitler in this situation, uh, but it means giving up personal freedom. So you kind of, you become one of a mass, you become one of a crowd, you become Sam and Eric rather than Sam and Eric, who would kind of speak separately in this chapter, which is significant. So then we're talking about uh, what they observed which was, of course, the killing of Simon. That was murder. It was dark. There was that, that bloody dance. There was lightning and thunder and rain. We were scared. So, of course, we've got fear there. That's the obvious one. So, I'm going to say that in the green. It was dark. There was that, that bloody dance. There was lightning and thunder and rain. We were scared. So, at this point, they're kind of weaponizing fear and making it... Uh, making it basically something that they can hide behind. So they were, at this point, they're just saying that they were scared, but they'll later go on to say that they didn't actually see it and they weren't actually there and uh, we went home early and we didn't see it, so we're all safe, we're all sound. Then on 195, we're looking for that justification that I just mentioned. So we left early, said Piggy quickly, because we were tired. So were we, very early. We were very tired. So you can see they're very clearly talking themselves into it. And also, I mean, I'm going to highlight it for leadership because they're kind of following the leadership of the lying. Uh, but very clearly, they're trying to disassociate from the death that they just saw. 196, we're going to draw a box around this little section, starting with a log had been jammed under the topmost rock and ending with down to the neck of land. And so basically this is the description of the object that they will use to kill Piggy. So basically they've set up a big heavy rock and they've set up a little lever underneath it um, so it's ready to be rolled down at the hill. Uh, and then Roger admired. He's a proper chief, isn't he? So of course that's our theme of leadership. And we're thinking about the way that violence has become to become something that represents leadership without violence without direct physical violent power people no longer perceive that as leadership so of course what Ralph has and sort of the role that Piggy serves is no longer considered leadership 197 the chief was sitting there naked to the waist his face now blocked out in white and red so I've got the four hashes here which in my novel represents tribalism you could probably do a better drawing than that or a better image to make that memorable but to me that makes a lot of sense at this point, Jack has kind of accepted his savagery and he's become more powerful as a result of that. Then bottom of 197, we've got, he, he came disguised. He may come even, he may come again, even though, dot, dot, dot. I'm just going to draw a little picture of the beast. Uh, so this is where the beast changes. So people thought that they killed the beast when they were at the party and they sort of killed Simon and felt like, you know, a big what potentially could have felt like a big vindictive kind of, we, we did it, we overcame everything, a triumphant roar has actually become, made them more aware that that wasn't the beast. And as he goes on, we gave him the head of our kill to eat, so watch and be careful. Uh, and then someone pipes up, but didn't we, didn't we, 
and then no how could we kill it so the beast has morphed at least in jack's conception of it and obviously jack's conception is the most important thing here and he's decided that the beast cannot be vanquished and the beast is something much more powerful than merely they could kill. Bottom of 199, Piggy took back his glasses and looked at the smoke with pleasure. So we've kind of got the two camps very clearly being juxtaposed here. The fire of Piggy, Ralph, Sam and Eric and their sort of love of Britishness and the old world and wanting to go back to the real world being contrasted as always on opposite pages with Jack's a kind of persistent beast that, the, that no longer can be vanquished. Uh, top of 200, we've got if we could make a radio or a plane or a boat. And I've just got here outside world. And what we're thinking about for that one is just they're clinging to Britishness. So I might even put a little uh, Union Jack British flag type situation as roughly and quickly as I can. And just they're clinging to their humanity, to their Britishness, and to their old world, the outside world. Uh, and then the discussion about the fire, we've got to keep it going. I'm too tired. And what's the good? So Eric is later backed up by Sam, who also says, well, what is the good? So this sort of, the lead leadership is being threatened, even though obviously this is Piggy's leadership, which isn't super impactful. But I feel it is quite significant. Uh, Piggy, really the only thing Piggy has leadership over at this point, I guess. And Ralph is the fire and the conch. And as the story will progress, these will become less and less meaningful within the sort of conception of the boys. And then, bottom of 202, Ralph settled himself for his nightly game of supposing. Supposing they could be transported home by jet. Then by morning they would land at that big airfield in Wiltshire. They would go by car, no, for things to be perfect they'd have to go by train and all the way down to Devon and take that cottage again. Then at the foot of the garden the wild ponies would come and look over the wall. So this is very much his conception of Britain and sort of the idea of being on a deserted island and thinking of, you know, the sort of food you could eat and those sort of things. And that's obviously very significant. We, you know, he's not just wishing he was home. He's wishing exactly that it, you know, it'd be firstly boat and then finally car and then no, oh no, train would be even better. And there's also ponies. So you know, it's very wishful thinking. Bottom of 203. If we don't, uh, Piggy whispered. I mean it, whispered Piggy. If we don't get home soon, we'll be balmy. Which I've got here foreshadowing, but it's kind of. Um, we could also say irony, maybe even I'll add dramatic irony. Um, so dramatic irony is basically when the audience knows something that uh, the characters don't. So it's really borderline here, it's up to you to decide really, is what he, what he just said irony, because he knows that everyone has gone crazy and they're sort of off chops, or is it dramatic irony in the sense that he doesn't actually realise what we know, which is that Jack and his tribe have pretty much gone fully crazy at this point. Then we're just going to jump to the last page, which is 207, uh, and this is just after Jack and his tribe have invaded their camp, uh, and I know, they didn't come for the conch, they came for something else. Ralph, what am I going to do? And then the final line is, from his left hand dangled Piggy's broken glasses. So Jack's leadership, um, in any other conception, I guess it would just be a plain case of bullying, but Jack's leadership, for some reason, values Piggy's glasses, and as Piggy's glasses have represented, you know, clear thinking, intellectualism, science, and so on, uh, the fact that they're now gone and taken over by another person is quite significant. And that's the end of chapter 10.